5280 Sports Network, good morning. It is your morning minute on a Thursday. Nate Lundy and Sean Drotar with you. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you listening to the radio show as well, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. every weekday on Mile High Sports Radio, AM 1340, FM 1047. You can also listen to us uh, online. You can also download the 5280 Sports Network app if you would like and listen to us uh, that way. Uh, Sean, the coaching news that we talked about somewhat yesterday because it had started to leak out is now official. The press conference will be today as Vance Joseph is introduced as the 16th head coach of the uh, Denver Broncos. Now that it's kind of soaked in for about 24 hours, how are you feeling? I wish they would have waited, quite frankly. I have nothing against Vance Joseph, and I hope he's very successful. I think the right fit for the team at this time was Kyle Shanahan. I think for the reasons that are obvious, but uh, Vance Joseph is obviously considered a rising star. You really haven't heard anything bad said about the, the guy in any of the last few years and any of the stops that he's had. So I think there is a lot of excitement there as well. My concern primarily is not about Joseph. The idea that Mike McCoy is going to come in as, and be the offensive coordinator seems to be the likeliest occurrence like that. What I don't like is Wade Phillips necessarily leaving. And just as, as we sit here with these microphones behind us, we just finished a segment on, on SB Nation Radio where we talked to Paul Klee and said that if Wade Phillips departs, as appears to be likely, this is over money, over the fact that Denver Broncos and John Elway don't, may not want to pay Wade Phillips what he wants to be paid as a coordinator that is basically renowned as the best defensive coordinator of the league. If that's the case, Nate, I'm uncomfortable with that decision. Yeah, staying away from it for money, and I'll agree. I don't want to see Wade Phillips go. Now, I also believe that there are other people capable of being a defensive coordinator. I like what Wade Phillips did, but there are other people that have equal talent. Um, but I think that it's been interesting to watch the last 24 hours or so to see how, um, frankly, I think a, a lot of uh, fans and, and even folks in the media immediately sort of jumped right over the Vance Joseph news and focused instantaneously on the coordinator positions. And I think that, you know, maybe that's a little bit of a shift. I'll even go back 10, 15 years in the NFL, Sean, where I, I think in a lot of cases, fans didn't even necessarily know or care who the coordinator was. Now, all of a sudden, I think there's much more of a realization of how all of those puzzle pieces fit together. And this becomes a far more important announcement than maybe what fans would have been thinking or expected uh, several years ago. It's really changed. And it speaks to the part of the reason that Vance Joseph was hired, because the, the, you're exactly right. It has changed. The coaching job is not necessarily that the Vince Lombardi standing on the sideline with the hat and telling everybody what to do. Now a head coach delegates. They delegate a great deal of their work. And so that's why Vance Joseph, I think, for John Elway was a good fit. He's talking about a guy that essentially, he's the captain of the ship. He's the one steering the ship, not the guy necessarily making sure the engines are working or making sure that everything's going on at once. That's the way a coach functions in the NFL today. That's why I think that the coordinator decisions are interesting, and I also think that's why Vance Johnson, in part, got the job, because yeah. X's and O's have been minimized from the head coaching role and offloaded onto the coordinators. The uh, press conference, as we mentioned, is uh, later today, so we'll actually get you a bonus edition of the Morning Minute later uh, this afternoon as uh, Sean and I will be there at the press conference. We'll get you another video just like this one, kind of recapping any takeaways from uh, that press conference. The other news from last night that, frankly, does affect the Broncos uh, is the Chargers expected to announce that they will move to Los Angeles. Not a big surprise that they're moving. I hate seeing a city lose their team um, in general, but I understand it. I get the business side of it. I get the uh, ideas of cities and counties and states arguing over who who's going to pay for what and where you find the money and all of that. Um, but I do feel bad that San Diego, after 56 years, would lose their team and have it travel back up to Los Angeles. Some weird dynamics going on with all these teams moving in the NFL. Yeah, well, good for San Diego. You decided you weren't going to subsidize uh, billionaires you know, giant new palace to play in, and it means you lose your team. You may have lost that battle, but San Diego, you won the war. All right, Sean says, keep your money in your pocket. Remember that, all right? Remember that. Savings advice from Sean Drotar. Maybe we could start a radio show where you give out don't, financial advice. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. No, no? Mm -mm. All right. Folks, we'll talk to you later on this afternoon as well. Thanks for checking out the Morning Minute, for listening to the radio show, and for checking out all the podcasts and the blogs and everything at 5280sportsnetwork.com. For Sean, I'm Nate. See ya.